Hey guys, welcome back to another League of Inches podcast. Um, you're with Jesse, Jake, and Jace tonight. So no Joel, another J in the crew. Um, but yeah, we're going to be talking team lists. We're talking tradies tonight as well. So um, how are you boys going? Pretty good. Not, yeah, not too bad. Su- super no. coach wise, <laughs> average, but otherwise, oh, going yeah. well. Uh, super I think coach wise, sort of bad. Yeah, it's it's a bad week for everyone last week. I, I had a bit of a, well, I, I don't know if I can say shocker, considering there was much much worse rounds. But I ended up um I ended up scoring one thousand and seventy one. So I, I lost rank this week, which is upsetting. But um, so many outs. Hey, David Fafita. I know a lot oh. of people lost him. Dom Young. There was just people dropping so late. Ridiculous. My, I lost my issue, the young issue was, else. Uh, yeah. What so would you say, Jake? Oh, I lost I lost Fafita and Young, and I think there was someone else in there that I lost as well. So I actually didn't have a um a full a full side. And I'll do I'll young. do you one better. I captain Fafita. Oh. And and then I was out and I didn't realise that he that he wasn't playing. Who was your vice? <laughs> oh no. I had uh, uh, Hines as my vice, so I got like 136. That's not the, worst, the worst, man. Considering a lot of people captain Garrick. Um, oh, yeah. You yeah. copped, you know, two HIAs very quickly. It was freaking horrible. Well, I had um, Garrick as well, so I got the nine. Oh, yeah. I almost forgot I kept an, I almost forgot I kept Manu, who got a cheeky 40 for me. Or 39 ended up on, so that was, yeah. that was great. <laughs> Yeah, I, me too, man. I captain Manu as well. But it was, you know, not my first preference. I had the captain on for feeder and then I changed it and then he was out and it was just a just a horrible week overall. But um yeah, ranked three thousand six hundred and three at the moment. Um, I'm not telling you my rank. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that Sorry. like Overall, though, total score-wise, there's not much between my score here and my rank and 10,000. You know, you're mm. only talking at the matter of a couple hundreds, if that. So yeah. things change so quickly this year. It's insane. Um, where are you sitting, Jace? Uh, 20,490 at the moment. Yeah. Did you um? Did you drop this week with your 900-dot score? Uh, what did it do? I, I got... I got 1084. Oh, yeah. And I actually went up. <laughs> yeah, wow. So it must have been a really shit week for everyone. Oh, it was, man. Yeah, pretty much a lot of the leagues that I'm in, like the average that I was seeing was between 900 and 1,000, maybe 1,100. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyone that got, you know, 12, 1,300 plus, it was through the roof. Um, So... We didn't get onto the team list uh, Tuesday video, obviously, yesterday. Realistically, there's not a great deal to sort of cover. Um, the first game of the round, we're looking at Dolphins versus Storm. Um, Trey Fuller's back in uh, for the Finns. The rest of the side looks pretty much as it has been for the last few weeks, uh, but with the inclusion of Tabita Pangai Jr. now. So okay. he's back back in the league now, dual position, quite cheap in the mid-300s as well, if anyone's game enough to get on board. I'm certainly not. Um, for the Storm, though, Ryan Pappenhausen is back. Yeah, that's big. Um, that's yeah, big. It's either, of you, either of you going to risk it? I'm very Ooh. tempted. I'm very I'd like, to, I'd like to see him play a little bit. He Pappy used to be great because he would kick goals as well. Yeah. Um, but now it's sort of like he really needs to get huge attacking stats. Mm. So it is a bit of a – but he is what six most traded in, which we'll go into later. So people are taking the punt. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it's fair too. Like realistically, the game's leading up to his injury, the broken bone one. Then no, nothing's – you know, they're not hamstrings, they're not concussions, they're like traumatic injuries. So, you know, if he's fit, you would have to think that he's mentally there ready to go again. But um, I can't knock anyone for doing it. It's just a hell of a risky move, but I'm, I'm very, very tempted. So um, he's in, Grant Anderson's in the centres for Remus. Uh, Sua Falongo's moved to the wing now. And um, yeah, Bronson Garlic obviously covering Harry Grant, the rest of the side, you know, sort of as expected. So... Um, for the second game, we've got the Titans and Warriors. Um, just quickly gone through the Titans. Day for feeders back. I think that was expected this week anyway. Thank you know, God. sort of torched a lot last week. So 
outside of him, I, I don't think there's too many other inclusions to really touch on. Um, Warriors, RTS back in the centres again. And again, unusual actually, Dylan Walker's named in the second row. Mm. I'm not too sure mm -hmm. if we see that. I reckon there's going to be quite a few maybe late changes before kickoff, but just well, a, yeah, he, it's an unusual one there, considering you've got Jackson Ford in the in the middles. So he has been playing um, a lot of lock, um, mm. which isn't necessarily too too ridiculously far different. And he's he's a good line runner. Like he he yeah. he hits the line real hard. He can he can do that at and ball play. So it's not actually, actually I don't see it as necessarily being a bad shout to be honest with you. Hmm. It, it, is uh, think, uh, it is interesting though because Bunty of was in the reserves. Hmm. He could have easily yep. played front row, Jackson Ford to, to twelve, and yeah. Dylan off the bench like he usually does. It's, I know that they're they're missing Capewell and, and um, Barnett, but it's really interesting to have the forwards in that way. But yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe he's been doing a lot of training. Who knows? Well, you've got Ford who plays probably really big minutes in the middle, which I don't think that um, they'd really want to give up necessarily. Mm. Um, but also the same thing with like Dylan Walker's. I think on the edge he could probably play the full eighty. You could almost play him eighty, and that's probably what they're trying to get out of him. Yeah, mm. yeah, because that's like predominantly that was Jackson Ford's edge too. So mm. even Laban, even Laban on the bench, he's actually been playing through the edge too. So we'll have to see what happens before that game. But anything of note there for either you two? Uh, no, no, is, no, is, uh, is Tom, Tom Alley a uh, debutant or? Um, I don't think so. I think he's played a bit, hasn't he? Okay. Maybe nothing major. I'm, I, Little I haven't actually watched. I haven't seen. I, if I've seen it, if he's played, I've never noticed him. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Um, we'll move to the next game. This will be a big one: the Roosters versus the Bulldogs. So, yeah, I'm excited for this one. Yeah, very keen for this. Obviously, we know how the last showing went with the Roosters and Bulldogs, with um, Dom Young send off, a few concussions, horrible weather. So we'll see if the Roosters crazy, can it was, kind of... It was a crazy game, was, though. Yeah, it was it was a scrappy mess of a game. So um, I think the, the Roosters will probably want to redeem themselves a little bit here. Um, James Tedesco, probably the most popular player this week. Obviously yep. not selected for Origin, so becomes a massive, massive play. Um, Tom Young's back in the side. Everyone else... Oh, you got Brandon Smith at hooker now. So it looks like he's made his way back into the team, probably just because Watson's been selected for the Blues. Terrell May yeah, starts um, in the 10. And Nafahu White at lock as well. So Radley moves to the second row, covering for Angus. Um, still, honestly, the depth in that side is incredible. It's such a good-looking team, even with these guys out. Um, for the Dogs, uh, you've got Gerald Skelton now actually on the wing. So um, Crichton's out. Jacob Karaz takes his position. Skelton comes in. Um, Matt Burton gets his six, so he obviously wasn't selected at all. Um, Josh Curran on the edge, too. Second row with uh, Bailey Haywood at lock. So, um, anything going think, on there? Do you think Berto is? I reckon. I think Burton's going to come out with a really big game on the weekend. I think, you know, I think he's unlucky to not find some place in the seventeen of the Blues. I really do. I think he's going to come out and just try to basically say, you know, this is what you're missing out on. But against the Roosters too, it's a good game to do it. Like against a good team to come out and go, you know. This is what you are you are missing out on me, and this is what I can provide. You know, I, I expect to see a lot of burden bombs. <laughs> yeah, I hope so. I, I always hope to see him. For for <laughs> me, for me, and my team, I need Salmon to produce what that round that he got two tries, which I, when I didn't play him, maybe he needed to do that him to do that again. And uh, far more far more silly, uh, I need him to have some decent minutes because I'm forced to play him in the front row. So for, for me, oh, wow. for me personally, I want I want the doggies to have a, a great game, and specifically those players, <laughs> the players that traditionally do not have great games. Yeah. <laughs> um, something to note as well: Viliami Kikau is on the extended. So I was just looking. I was just looking at that. Um, you know, I would be half inclined to think that he gets named in there. Um, maybe even Farmer Silly drops out entirely at his expense. So it's it's it's, it's possible for sure. Who knows, but it's definitely worth a look at the fact that they've named him there. And I think he's about due to come back anyway around now. So um, for your sake, I hope you get Farmer Silly, but realistically, I don't think you get much out of him. <laughs> uh, he's, he's got a couple he's, of uh, 15s, I think, so. 
Yeah. He's got oh, I reckon he's got two tries in him this week and he's gonna for some reason be asked to kick a conversion. So there you go. <laughs> Honestly, I'd put yeah. money on that just to see it happen. <laughs> God. Um and then okay, so we've got two more games left. We've got the Rabbits and Manly. So um at a core, you've got Jai Gray in the fullback spot. Is he in for Latrell? Mm. Gray? I think he was actually. Yeah, I think is this his, is this his comeback after injury potentially? Yeah, it sort of lines up well with um with Latrell being picked too. Yeah, so. true. Um, so we've got him in the side again. Um, with the rest of the team though, I actually don't think there's too much else changing. Um, Kalama Tangi. Well, is... Sorry. Oh, sorry. Right. Keep going. No, 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 I was wrong. Sorry. Right. Keep going. That's all right. Cameron Murray's obviously at Origin, so yeah. Keon goes to lock, and uh, Jai Arrow's back too with his rib injury that looked horrific according to you know, how much he was rolling around. But he's back in the side. Uh, Lehi Hopper-White, he starts for Manly in the fullback spot again. Um, Ruben Garrick's out with his HIA, so Aaron Shook um, starts in the centres. Weird one. Carl Lawton's in the halves, covering for Cherry Evans, so that's a strange strange pick. Um, doesn't Sim- doesn't Sorry, Simkin play... Doesn't Simkin sometimes play in the halves? Wouldn't you? Wouldn't you possibly um, put Lawton in? Well, I would imagine uh, that, like Simkin played last week, eighty minutes at hooker, but obviously Lawton off the bench and usually a hooker. Um, just seems like their stocks have kind of run out. Well, well is Jacob are, Arthur injured? I was going to say they've got Jacob Arthur there. They're not playing him, and they got Humphreys too that they just don't seem to give time to. Just, so, just, um. Just, I was just gonna see if he's been named, but you keep going. I'll see if he's been named in the um. Yeah. Keep so going. sorry. So the you've got, Reggie's. Yeah. yeah. With Burbo, God bless Burbo, and Nathan Brown at lock. Um. I suppose yeah, it's it's. I don't know. I can't really call that much of a blockbuster side, but you know, they'll get their work done. Uh, anything of note between those two? I think just Manly's, just Manly's bench is suffering. That's for sure. Hmm. Yeah, they're, um, they're, he, he has has really run out, hasn't it? Yeah, he's not been named. Just, just so you are, he must be injured. I reckon he's got to be injured. There you go. Um, I was just going to say the Rabbitohs themselves. They don't want. They definitely wouldn't want to lose the momentum that they've had over the last two weeks because they are in a bit of momentum and they are playing pretty well. I think yep. that Keon actually brings a lot to the middle. Yep. Um, I don't necessarily think that Michael Cheekham brings all that much, to be honest with you. So, obviously, uh, you'd rather potentially key on over there with Murray in, in your lock. But what are you going to do, Murray's at Origin? Um, but I do think y- you're hoping you're hoping that Rabbitohs Rabbit are hoping that they can win this while they have their big star out. Or stars. Yeah. Yeah, their, their form's really sort of been on the back of how good latrell has been in the last few weeks as mm. well. So, this will be a big test for them. Um, I'd say more than anything, it'd be a test for probably their halves, Whiten and Walker. Just to see what they can, they can do. Um, fair enough. Walker's actually been playing quite well, so uh, we'll see how he steers the ship. But um, yeah, for the final game of the week, we've got the Tigers and the Raiders. So an absolute standout here. Um, <laughs> I honestly, I go through the Tigers team, and I always think that they've got you know how many injuries do they have, and they've still lost quite a few players. Um, the back line remains the same. Lockie Galvin is back in the side with Aiden Caesar. So um, much to the relief of many, many super coach owners out there that didn't sell him last week. Um, Ruben Porter starts in the second row with Samuel Afainu and Matamu is at lock. So, um, how did, how did yeah. Ruben Porter go last week? Uh, I didn't watch this game personally. Um, I think points wise, he scored around the 40s, mid mid 40s or so. Mm. Um, I suppose for long term prospects, you know, you've got he's probably not in their preferred 17 overall anyway. When you're thinking about Klimmer, Papali'i, Bateman, all these guys that are still out that are due back quite soon. Um, but bottom dollar cash out option, like you, you could do much worse than it. So um, for the Raiders, Patrick. Tomoko, Chris, Savage. The back line remains the same. For the whole side, actually, remains the same, as far as I can see. Um, nothing in the starting lineup changes, and still no Corey Horsburgh either. Well, I can't catch a trick. I don't know where yeah. he is. So he, yeah, he's not even on the extended bench either. 
No, no, <clears throat> he's just gone um, straight MIA. Haven't hasn't been there. So Starling's um, out as well. Oh yeah, Wolford's in. So nothing major going on with that one. Um, so I suppose with team list sort of wrapped up, you know, as much as you can really go through a buy round team list, we can talk trades. Um, has anything sort of popped out for you in this round for your trade-ins? I have decided I was thinking about it. I have drink water and I know I do have to get rid of him. Not yep. going to do it this week. I was thinking the, the, the big, um, drink water to Teddy trade that everyone is doing. I think with the defense that the Bulldogs have shown recently, I don't rate it. I know, I know Teddy's on fire. He's he's been on he's been on in good form. I'm just, I don't know. I'm thinking I'm thinking I might wait a week because I know the drinky has to has to be a sell with the next few rounds that he's got going on. Um, it's just it's just very difficult for me. And then um, I've gone. I, I've had, I had um Hughes. For the Bulldogs, and I also had Joe Chan still for a while, so I've had to just I'm nothing them to start having some money to start upgrading for the rest of the year. Oh, okay. So you're dropping yeah. them both this week to just I make am. cash. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I ended up point. on. Well, I've got I've currently made the Teddy trade, but I'm going to be reversing that. But even if I did make that trade, I'll be on eight uh, four hundred and twelve thousand for next week, like left in the bank. That's heaps. Then if if I if I don't sell. If I sell drink water, I'm not gonna. I'm obviously not gonna uh, nuff him. But I also thought about possibly nuffing Olam because I've got I've got a lot of depth in my center wing. So if I did that, I'd have about eight hundred thousand for the rest of this, like to start upgrading for the rest of the season. So that's I'm, a I'm war chest. Gonna, <laughs> yeah, I'm, poss I'm possibly thinking of doing a big a big nuff week this week and just getting amongst it for the rest of the for the rest yeah. of the year. It's a hell of a risky play, Bob. Mm. Oh, yeah. So, like, you can line yourself up. How many trades do you have left? If I make all three, I'll have ten left for the season. So I know, oh, I know, I know. Throw. I'm aware. I'm aware. I'm in a bad situation, and I feel like if I'm going oh. to, because I, I I play for head for he, uh, head to head, because I'm in a cash comp more so than I do for overall. Yep. Um, and I haven't been doing that great. I feel like every time I'm every week I have my projected is higher. Every week I lose. I don't know what is going on with it. It's just it's just. It's just super coach luck. It's just no good for me this year. Yeah, it's just it's honestly just no good for me this year. Um, but I think I'm gonna have to make a big play. I want to try and pick players that are not gonna have a buy in the last ten rounds and just go hard on big players. Yeah, that's that's what I'm gonna do for my head to head. I'm I'm out of the overall. I'm, there's no point. I'm, <laughs> don't even call. About me. you, Jay. <laughs> um, well, I'm I'm sticking. I've had uh, drinking and Edwards since about uh, around four or five as my stock standard fullbacks. And as much as everyone's talking about drink water needs to go, he's got a five round average of like 83 um, and he's been solid. He just keeps getting just enough that I don't want to get rid of him. And him and Edwards are the two top scoring still. So mm. um, I'm going to hold on, hold on to them and just not play a fullback this week. Or what do you do? I mean, that's the way it is. Um, and then I'm, I'm making some very just – sort of sort of make money, sort of just make the numbers up for this week because otherwise I think I'd only have about nine available. <laughs> so I've got rid of Henry because he, he seems to have peaked in price and he's been up and down. Yeah. Um, uh, for Fainu, uh, for a dual position, a bit mm -hmm. of cash, and he's been averaging about 48. Uh, yep. Mulatala, I've got sick of him. Uh, I brought him in about the same price that I'm getting rid of him. So all the money that I made on him, uh, I've lost, but it is what it is. Uh, he's pissing me off now. He does nothing. Uh, he's not even a workhorse. Uh, so he's just got a downward trajectory. And I brought him in for similar uh, in terms of averaging uh, the last uh, three to five games in Ethan Strange. At a, at a lower price, so a bit of cash there, dual position. Um, I had uh, a a Lamo, a a, a, a Lee, sorry, a Lay Melo. Uh, that's probably wrong. From the Tigers. From the Tigers, um, with All the hopes that he would uh, get some decent cash. It did not eventuate. Didn't happen. <laughs> um, so I'm um, bringing in uh, Anderson. Hopefully Anderson secures a spot. Uh, if not, it's a quick cash grab anyway. 
um, and try and put some players in the field for the next couple of weeks. And uh, I think all of them are, are playing through. So that's that's where I'm going with it. They're, they're pretty much nothing trades to just have some bodies on the field, um, a little bit of cash, and then get through mm. get through the buy rounds. Did you? So you're saying you're trading out Mulatalo? Is that yeah. what I heard? Yeah. He's you're pissed trading me off. Mulatalo out now. Have you seen the run coming and the buy the 19 round buy? But he's doing nothing. He hasn't done anything for five rounds. Yeah, but the do five you, rounds. Think, you go back you and think look at the Nico teams back? they played. In, it was the hardest five rounds they could have played. In the last five, you could make it six because it goes back six. They've played Melbourne, yeah. the Roosters, Penrith, the Eels, Mushroom Mushrooms, the Broncos, and the Dolphins. That yeah. was that's been their last stretch. Their next game's coming. They've got the Bulldogs this week. Oh, next round, sorry, in round seventeen. Then the Titans. That's a tough round, though. Then the Tigers. Then the Cowboys. They are pretty leaky sides. If you went past, if you go past the dot, uh, the and dogs, then the and then the Rabbits, and then they play the Titans again, and then they play the Knights, and then the Dragons. Like their run from now until the end of the season. Honestly, the Sharks for me have the best stretch of the games until from 17 through to the very last round of the year. It's unbelievable. Yeah, look, I, I don't know if I'm going to say you're wrong, but I've got I've got Hines and, and Eero. Yep. So I feel like for me, he's the he's the one that has to go. But I, I, I definitely hear what you're saying, but it's mm. um, he's just pissed me off. <laughs> he's just really oh, pissed man. me off. I've Dude, lost the 250k yeah. that he made and... I just like yeah. it's just one of those cut cut my losses and you know I guarantee yeah. it if you if you're listening to this uh, Muller Tyler is going to go big for the next five games so <laughs> well that's the thing like he's got every chance to and you've you've lost the coin on him but like uh, I'd be half inclined to just ride him out until round nineteen their buyers in yeah. round twenty take the take advantage of the next few weeks obviously he's off this week but get him through to the round nineteen buy get rid of him in round twenty. And I reckon you would have made money between now and then on him. If he can't score tries or get line breaks or anything against the next three, I will I'll pack it in, honestly. <laughs> Dead set. I don't have him. Like I had him very, very early in the year. And then I traded him to Val Holmes in like round four or something. But I just think, yeah, if you've got someone like that, like regretfully, I, I my last week, I made the worst possible trade-in of all time. Makes me sick even looking at it in my side. I had David Armstrong, and I was very worried about my numbers coming into this one because I didn't think Galvin was going to get names, and I was already one short. I looked at who I could afford straight for for Armstrong. I looked at Dallin. I saw, oh, no. I saw a pretty much flat zero break-even. I looked at the previous games against Melbourne. Scored four tries in two games, two 99 pointers in a row. Sean Johnson was back. They're playing at home. Surely he can do something if not score a try. No, he does absolutely fuck yeah. all. Gets sin bin, not... and now he's I suspended. He scored the first try. Oh, no, he scored 13 points. I traded him in, and to be fair, I actually made some money on him because his break even was so freaking low. Um, and now I've got. I guess I've got him. And I'm yeah, like, so say, I just, you, you've I've got to hold him, him, right? Well, that's <laughs> the thing. Like, I've done it now. I, I got him in four this week. I wanted him to play against the Titans. And I thought, yeah. all right, sweet. I can get him for this round. Um, he doesn't even play around 19. So it doesn't help me for the next buy. And now I'm just like, oh, I feel sick. That's sad. I feel how, many, sick. Um, how many trades are you working with? Uh, before trades this week, I've got 18 and two boosts. So... I don't know if that's enough, to be honest with you. Like, I'm going to hold him for, I don't know. I might hold him till round 19 and see what happens. But after that, honestly, I'm not even going to humor it. I'm so off him from one game. Um, Joel had him, actually. Joel bought him in at, like, 750K early season, right as he dropped. As soon as he started playing oh. bad, probably coincided with Sean Johnson being injured, and he absolutely fried him. And he even said, he's like, watch him kill it for you. After he did nothing for me, thirteen was the worst score that he's ever had all year. So <laughs> I and I got that in suspension. So yeah, I would take this one game as a worse option than like eight in a row that he copped. So yeah, that that kind of hurts. But 
Um, even still, you know, like there's a few players that are kind of at the end of their line now in the center wing. So there's not too many good options, especially with the buys coming through. Um, mm. Fallo goes on the wing now. Blaise Salungi sort of max price. There's a few of them that are basically at the end of their line. So, you know, there's a lot of options to trade out, but unfortunately not too many to trade in. Um, but, I, like, we'll go through the the most traded in and outs of the week and we can uh, sort of see where people are going with it. Um, the most traded outs, Scott Drinkwater. Yeah. So there you go, Jace, to your point. He is the highest scoring fullback, but he's played two more games than the other guys have, so... Um, that's, that's a good point. It's a very fair point. Yeah. So average wise, a little bit lower. I started the year with him, and I've had him the whole time. So. Yeah, I'm um, the same. Yeah. Yeah. So outside of like fullbacks, there's obviously been so many come and go injuries and Origin and the rest of it. Scott Drinkwater has been the solid mainstay, and I feel like he'll just keep going all year. Honestly, I, I don't really find a reason to to want to move him on. He kind of hasn't done anything wrong. Yeah, that's, that's what I was feeling as well, is that he just always gets just enough. Like, some of his low low scores of 60, he had a 33 or something once. But even if he gets 60, 70, he's sort of like, that's still decent. And then if if they if he's in that form and, you know, he, he got, he got what did he get? Like 133 or something, one of the rounds. And he's got, yeah, he's got that ceiling, you know, like yeah. he really can go crazy. And him getting like seventies and eighties for me is like I'm happy that he's you know he's just he's just doing stock standard stuff, getting that one try assist or a line break or a try that gets you up there with his work rate. So you sort of you sort of just like it's it's a difficult one, but I see what people are doing. You've got Tedesco three round average over a hundred. You've got uh, Pappy coming back. You've got uh, Hopper Wate who could make you another another eighty k or so. So yeah, I understand where people are going with it, but I just, I just don't, I just don't want to risk it. I like my, my Drinky and Edwards combo. They're mm-hmm. both getting me about 140, 150 in my in my um, fullbacks as almost like a guarantee, and I, I'm very happy with that. So if I can make yeah. changes elsewhere and just try and get through the buy rounds, I think that's a, that's my play. But yeah, I understand why people are doing it because there are the very tempting options. Mm. Yeah, hundred percent. Jake, who are your fullbacks? Uh, well, with before I make any trades this week, currently, uh, Drinky and Garrett. Yeah. Although Eero was there before, it's just they're interchangeable. Same. Yeah, I'm in the same. exact same position with my second fullback at the moment anyway. Um, yeah, yeah that, that's all. Yeah. It wasn't like that all season. Yeah, no, it's always chopping and changing. But are you looking to trade Drinky out to, to Tedesco? That's the play for you. Well, well I, I'm thinking about it. If I don't, if I don't do that, I'm gonna hold the hold the trade, potentially, and then when Origin is over, uh, I think Edwards comes in for me because, like I said, I have to play, I have to play for the last few rounds. I can't be playing for now. I have to be playing. I want to try and go ten in a row at the end to sneak into the eight, and I'm gonna to have to take a big risk to do that. So I'm gonna to have mm. to make trades for the last ten rounds, but it's risky because then if someone gets injured, stuffed. But I'm at that point where I have no choice, really. Like, yeah. I just have to – I can't be playing round to, round to round. I have to be playing to get go 10 in a row. So I'm thinking while it's yeah. the buyers now, I'm going to be play, play, playing for the, yeah playing for those last 10, unfortunately. I've yeah. put myself in a very bad situation this year. Mm. Worst super coach year I've ever played, easily. <laughs> I think it's the worst for most, man. This year's been carnage. You, you, last, like, I don't know. There's been other seasons, too, where even in different formats where you're like, you can plan ahead. And you could plan ahead. I've never seen more late changes to a team list than this year, yeah. ever before. I like that wait. one hour before kickoff. Uh, I've honestly, oh, I've never seen anything like it. You're getting wholesale changes every single week. Like, when has yeah. that ever been the norm? It's, it's a freaking killer, man. I, I cannot agree. wait. As, as much as I don't necessarily actually want one in the NRL, I can't wait till there's an 18th team. No buys each week. <laughs> is going to be the best thing ever. I'm not organized enough to plan for that stuff. Like, I can't do it. I can plan for yeah. three buy rounds in a year. That's fine. It doesn't bother me. But if there's a buy each week, it just stuffs everything. I feel like the, the weekly buy hasn't really been too much of a drama unless you really stack your side with one team and you don't have other depth. I, I like to stack my side with, like, a few 
like teams that are running hot. T- mm. I tend to I tend to stack, and then obviously I like I'll have your, your rare player, like your Fafita. You don't really have heaps of Gold Coast players typically, but you have your Fafita because you know what he can do. But like yep. you'd have a few Storm players or a few Panthers players or a few Roosters players. Like then if if there's a round where they are out, it really hurts me. I feel like I do. It. That's just because I've always played that way before the buys. That's what's mm. really killing me. I don't think I've adapted very well to that. Yeah, no, it's, it is. Like, you know, the good teams score good usually, but, like, the gun players in the shit teams usually are the, the big fish in the little pond kind of thing. So, yeah. yeah. But, then, um, but then you always have to worry about them coming up against, like, a good team because you're like, well, they're just going to shut them down. Then you're like, well, yeah, you know what I mean? But like you wor- the good ones get past it. Oh, no, yeah. you're right. Like, like you're for feeders and whatnot. But at the same time, like, if you go, like, oh, the Titans are coming up against the Panthers, well you know that they're going to focus on shutting him down. I know that he's good enough to get past, but in that just specific, yeah. you know, that's their goal is to, we know who their threats are. Let's target them. Yeah. That's a thing too. Like, I think regardless of the fact, don't just don't play anyone against Penrith. They always no, that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, that's, that's, that's really true. Against Penrith. That's um, very true. Yeah. So next one on the list, actually run through the next few of them. David Armstrong is the second most traded. You know, fair enough. He's probably yeah. never going to come back. He's he's off. Um, Blaze to Lucky is the third. So I don't get that one. Mm. I, I do. I, I get it a little bit. Like I get that he's sort of he's stretching to the end of his. He's made a lot of money. He, he's made good cash. And I held him all year. I never 400. traded him out. I never traded him out during that period where you know Brad Arthur was like, "Oh, you're here now. You're in the bench now. You're over here." Like I never traded him out during that. He got he got stiffed, stu- uh, mucked around with. But I held him, and he's made a lot of money for me. But I also think that now that he's playing on the wing for us, there's no necessary reason to get rid of him. I feel like our yeah. wings of para tend to tend to be where we score our tries mostly. Yeah. Um, I, I I intend on holding him until he is actually hemorrhaging cash or leaking cash for me. I intend on holding him, maybe not the whole season, uh, but he's not something. He's not. He's not a priority. Yeah. No, that's fair. Chase, you got him as well. Uh, yeah, so like, yeah, I kept, I, I held on to him the whole time. Got him, got him yeah. for his uh, price rise, and then I've held on to him. And I, and I will, I'll do the same because he's on a para wing. He might play wing or center. You know, there's a possibility that he could go to fullback at any time as well, depending on how Gutho's knees go. So I, I feel like it's a good, it's a good uh, guy to have. Um, potentially play him every week. Um, you can see how he goes, and he does. He does have a high ceiling as well. He got like a ninety something, almost a hundred. Um, so he's definitely got uh, enough points in him. Uh, and if and if you know if Para do go on a bit of a run, even though it might not be into the finals or anything like that, um, they you know they can put on some tries, and he could be he could be the benefactor of uh, for many points. So uh, the yeah, thing I'm is, definitely keen for him to, to to hold on. Sorry. The thing is with Talangi is he's outside of Panasini. And Panasini has got an, such an unpredictable offload, like he could just pop out at any moment, and all of a sudden you, you know, you're scoring tries. And you've got Mitch Moses on that side who loves those short side raids. So he'll he'll get line breaks, he'll get tries or try assists or what? Or not, not try assists potentially, but he'll get th- like he definitely will get attacking stats. That's not. Yeah. I don't think that's in doubt. Even if it's only one or two in a game, you, you you're looking at fifty at a minimum probably a game. I, I reckon so too. I reckon around that as well. Like obviously he scored the try um, last week. He scored 43. So it was quite a low base scoring game for him, which for the last like few weeks, even at fullback, obviously the, the Eagles have been getting belted um, while he was at fullback. And it's like really no fault of his own. He's probably been the only shining light in that side, you know, before Moses and Gutho came back. Um, he pipped a hundred. He got 102 right in the middle yeah, of all that. Yeah, so yeah. You know, like you're talking I don't think... 90, 93, 102, 87. Like, they're, they're insane scoring games for, for a young bloke at fullback. So I don't, I don't think anyone can doubt his offense. I think it's his defense that hurts him. But, like, yeah. um, Supercoach is a highly offensive scored system. So it doesn't necessarily yeah. matter if you're all that bad at Not particularly. Back. Especially if they're going to play him on the wing, too. And, like, his job oh, security, yeah. I reckon, is nailed for the season on the wing, if that's the case. Yeah. Like, Simonson's out. I, I don't see the any reason why. Yeah, oh, 100%. The they, were, they were pretty much outraged when he was just getting punted between every other position too. So, um, you know, I, I reckon he keeps the spot too. It's more of a – I reckon it's definitely a luxury trading him out. 
Um, yep. But again, like, you know, if you need to find cash, he's 600K. Like, he's made 401K since he started. Um, it's a it's a pretty mm-hmm. penny. Like, you can cash out quite well. But again, it's like, who are you going to right now if you're not planning for the future well ahead? Yeah, unless, so, you're, unless you're upgrading. Yeah, unless you're upgrading potentially yeah. like your low max or your, you know, those types of players. Yeah. But again, he's playing blues. So same thing. Mm. And he plays in the round, round 19 buy, which definitely counts. Round 19 is oh, the yeah. worst one possible. So, you know, if you've got an asset, you know, like a Molotalo, Chase, that you've got, keep him. <laughs> keep him for 19 first and then get rid of him. It's so important. Yeah, I think um, I think you've I think you've convinced me. <laughs> you convinced yeah. me and I don't even have him. <laughs> yeah, I think he's, you've convinced he's me. He's not a bad buy if that's the case too, realistically at his price, but you freaking roller coaster ride, man. It's it's never the, fun. He's almost the big question is though, what what are you doing, Jesse? Have you given us your trades? What are you doing? What am I doing? Yeah. Oh man. Um I'm still trying to work it out, to be honest with you. Um I was looking at going well, I need cash at the moment. I've got about six point eight k, and I can I can't do anything with it. Mm. Um, so I was thinking to make some, about one eighty odd. Uh, Jaden Braley, who's my backup hooker, who I realistically do not play. I got him cheap and made some money out. Um, going straight to Jake Simkin, who's two hundred and seven okay. two hundred and seventeen k. Um, Lockie Croker seems to just be gone with this concussion issue. Literally no word about when he's ever coming back. Um, Played 80 minutes last week. Realistically, I don't really care. If he drops out of the side altogether, it's enough. The only problem is the Dolphins have a Lawton. buy in round 18. Yeah, yeah plus there's Lawton. Lawton. So, mm-hmm. well, last week Lawton didn't play um, hooker. So, Simkin did. Right. So, we'll see. And if he disappears, then he's gone. And that's fine by me. I'll just make sure I work around my main hooker, which I've been doing pretty much all year. Um, and that frees up a fair bit of coin for me. And then I, I, re- I really want Tedesco. I really want that second fullback, a gun fullback, because I have drink water and I don't really have anyone else. Um, really, my only other option that I'm looking at, and I really don't like doing it, Bell Holmes. I'm contemplating trading so, him out. Not trading him out. I was about to say, he's so risky at the moment. So I was going to say a buy-in would be interesting. But I thought you were going to say bringing him in. I was like, Phew. No, I've That's- had him. I've had him for a very long time. And... The way that I'm looking at it, you know, he's he's not been as good as he was earlier. Like, he's still averaging 77. Um, break even of 111. Um, he's obviously out this week with Origin. If he backs up next week, they play Penrith, um, which I'd imagine well, he will. Similar... It's, a sun... it's a Sunday game, so I reckon he plays. It's a but... similar situation to Drinky, isn't it? That's the reason people are getting rid of him. They've got, I think, exactly. is it two buys, or, two buys over the next five rounds? They've got, like, Yep. One forced and then one after that. And then they also have Panthers in that. So over the next five rounds, they're pretty much, yeah. you know, he's going to get either no score or low scores for three of those. Like, yeah. So he, um, yeah, he won't play this week. He won't play round 19 either. So he offers no buy around coverage. Um, there's a potential, depending on how he goes in origin, he doesn't play around 17 or round 20. So um, just over that period, I don't know, like he might leak cash, he might hemorrhage a fair bit, and I might even be able to go blaze to Val Holmes in the future if I feel like getting back on. That's, that's what I'm looking at, and then it gives me more than enough coin to get Tedesco in, and then I can just put Garrick back in the centers. So um, that's what I'm thinking of doing at the moment, but again, I'm not super locked into it. Um, but outside of that, I, there's really not too many other options that are standing out to me. Like, at all. There's Pappenhausen, who I really like. Um, but again, it's like, it's it's a hell of a risky play getting Pappen so fast. I went I went in on him earlier in the season um, when he first made his comeback after, obviously, that big injury last year. Um, and he, he never let me down at any point until he got injured, to be honest with you. Like, I would... This this one this recent, most recent injury wasn't too bad, but at the same time, how many how many injuries is it going to take before you kind of go okay? It's pretty likely he's going to get injured again, and, and it's hard because you know can you really truly label a player injury prone? Well, yeah, if they're getting injured every three weeks, yeah, you probably can. Like every three every three games that they play, and then they go they're going again for another you know two months, three months, like your Tom Trebojevic is. Yeah. What like, is the risk? Is the risk worth it? You know what the reward is, but is the risk worth it? Yeah. 
there's a difference between the injuries though. Like Tommy Turbo's body seems to fail him on its own. Like his muscles, mm-hmm. it's all soft tissue. Things pull up and he just gets injured. But like you look at Pappenhausen's ones, he got his knee smashed in from White and shattered it to bits. I know that. Very, I know that, one, that was rough. That, that's and then he okay. comes back from injury. Nelson Asafa Solomon chops him at the ankle, snaps it in half. So, like, it's gone straight away. And then he gets all these plates put in and he gets tackled and, you know, one of them fractures again. So they're oh, at no nice. fault of his his own. It's just so unlucky. It's like surely it couldn't happen. To come back. It couldn't happen to a better bloke. I, I, I feel really bad for him because he's such a good player of the game. He is. Yeah. It's, it, it just, it's, a, it's a real shame. It's the same with Tom Dravovic. Like, I hate versing him as an Eels player, but as an NRL fan, or not Eels player, as an Eels fan, as an... NRL fan, you don't ever want to see those types of players out of the game because they're just mm. they're they're the ones that people come to watch. They're the ones that people pay big money to come and see, and 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 they're actually good blokes. Well, supposedly, I suppose I don't know all, but well, um, well for, for someone that hates Melbourne, um, I don't mind Pappy, and plus he's a he's yeah. a tough Welshman as well. So yeah, exactly right. And same same with same with same with Tom Tabrovich. So you know. If they play for teams I hate, they're still New South Wales. At least that's yeah, a too. that's a redeem it's a redeeming quality. But you never yeah, you never want injuries to you never want injuries to happen to anyone except for Felice Cafusi because <laughs> <that's right>. um, <laughs> oh and Munster do not like it uh, and 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 potentially Munster. Um, <laughs> but other than that, you know you don't well, you don't want injuries to happen, and especially not those big long term ones like that are the potential injury uh, se- uh, career, career injuries, ending. really. Yeah, because honestly, that knee shattering one that could have ended his, Pappy's career, but he he fought back to his credit. Yeah, and he looked good coming back from it too. That's the thing. Mm. I was very, I was, I was wary about it. I, I wanted to start with him, and I wanted to see how he went. He looked really good in the preseason. I obviously didn't start with him. I didn't get on board, and then he got injured again. So I was like, well, I'm kind of glad I didn't. But at the same time, it's like just give him a break, man. Just let him play. Yeah. He just never, he never looked. It never looked like he skipped a beat, to be honest with you. No. Yeah, it didn't look like cool. it held him back at all. So, yeah. so what are the um, thoughts of bringing Pappy in then? Is it is it too much of a risk at the moment? or For, for, for me, I'm, I'm not doing it. With 10, with 10 trades left, I can't do it. Yeah. In that position, I probably wouldn't. Um, I'm not too sure if he really offers you great games towards the end of the season too for your head-to-head. I have to double-check what their run looks like, but... I'm I'm tempted. I'm tempted to go early, to be honest with you. Um, when I look at Tedesco, especially against the Dogs, like obviously it's just one game with a good break even. It kind of doesn't matter if he doesn't score too well, but the Dogs are the best defensive side right now. Yeah. Like they they just do not leak points, man. Yeah. Um, they're second currently for um, fullbacks, I think it is, defensively. Yeah, they are. Bulldogs rank second defensively against fullbacks, so. Um, they're just a different animal this year. They're not like the Bulldogs of old where you can kind of just count it as an easy run, like a Tigers game. Or no, a... yeah, you're right about that. So they're just different. Um, obviously, with a 36 break even, you can kind of allow it, but he's traded by almost 11 and a half, a bit over 11 and a half thousand people this week. Who's that? Yeah, that's, a, that's a third of his entire ownership. Yeah. This round. Yeah. So. It's, a, it's a big one. And it, it's almost like if you don't go with the flow, um, and he doesn't do well. Your other your other fullbacks are almost pods. Mm. His, his ownership is going to be so high. Yeah. Well, then. So yeah, I have a question for you boys. I have a question for you boys. Then for me to help me like, with with what it, with with the planning I'm doing for the last ten rounds. So I'm obviously going to want two big scoring fullbacks because that's one of the most important positions, obviously in the in the game. I'm I want Dylan Edwards for the last ten rounds because he's just been on. He's just so consistently getting the same. Sort of higher scores, and you know what you know what Panthers are always going to give you when he when they're on. Plus Nathan Cleary comes back relatively soon as well. Um, do I go with Teddy this week? Do you feel like because that still keeps me with ten trades left? And then when Origins over, bring in Edwards then, or do I save the trade from Drinkwater and then a few rounds from now just go straight shift across to Edwards for those last sort of ten rounds or so? I reckon Cleary coming back hinders Edwards' points. Yeah, that's fair. He usually steps up when he's away. The whole time Ed, uh, Cleary's been out, Edwards has been kicking, which he won't continue mm-hmm. to do. Um, but you, so had a, you had Alamotti t- take Alamotti's over. Alamotti's been kicking before. as well. Yeah. yeah, and then we straight away, we saw Edwards' points drop back down. It was, you know, 70-point 
rough average. And that's every year I look at it and I think Edwards is a 70 point scorer every single week. Mm. He never dips below that. You know, obviously now with the responsibility and the extra work and the kicking, it's pushed him to averaging a hundred basically every round. And that's, that's kind of what you'll get with Cleary out. But I don't know. I just think when Cleary's back in the side, I just, I, I'll be very be surprised then? if he round 20. Mm, so just after origin two, Yep. Not Origin 2, Origin as well. <laughs> Origin. <laughs> yeah. I know you mean. Um, yeah. So. Jake, Jake, what about what about making some cash? Because if you bring in Hopawati and he stays there and then your your long-term plan is to get Edwards or some or someone else. I know Tedesco is at 36 break even, so he still can make some money, but is that well see, like I said, if all if I if I if I um do my three trades this week, right? And I'm selling uh, Sam Hughes. I already had a little bit of cash. Selling Sam Hughes, selling Joe Chan, and then no, like, nothing them, and then nothing Justin Olam, which I know potentially isn't the greatest call ever, but he's so inconsistent and mostly gets yeah. bad scores. He finally got a big one, so I'm using the opportunity now while I can. Um, oh, nothing Olam. That gets me 820k for the to to play with with a with an already decent side. Um. Like my is that, my is side that, is now in your bank. That will be in my bank for next week. Playable with like from, from that's good. Home. That's pretty good. And like okay, so tell me. All right, well, do should I? Because you guys haven't seen. Have you guys gone through your teams on here before? Um. Oh, we or have. No, no, really. I don't have any slides or anything to bring up, so it's a bit tricky to just run through the whole lot. But... Uh, yeah, I won't. I won't do that then. That's okay. But yeah, um, my team isn't necessarily bad. Like there isn't actually all that much. There wouldn't be that much upgrading needed to make it a very strong side for that last ten rounds. Mm. So I'll have a catch. You, uh, you can present. You can do the the. I can show you my horrible side. Oh, that's by a good sharing point. the screen. <laughs> yeah, you you. That's a that's a that's a great idea. Why didn't I think of that? Yeah, I'll I just. Dead air. I'm I'm still very much not in the mindset yet of nothing out, you know, half my side for. You're, for other you're playing for overall, like, correct? Uh, I am in both head to heads. I'm in cash comps and I'm playing overalls. So I'm playing everything. So I'm not specifically targeting any particular comp. Um, I'm kind of just running with it as it is and hoping my head to heads win with my overall side doing okay. So. Um, Do you boys mind if I present one? Go for it. Well, I've, I've, I've pulled mine up. Can you see it? Oh, I can't see yours, no. Oh, okay. Oh, oh there we are. There it so, is. Yeah, so what? JMK and Grant, I usually run both at the same time. Mm -hmm. I've got um, AFB and Huss, and then I've in my, I'm into my emergency Farmer Suli. <laughs> Hoping he gets something. <laughs> Um, hopefully, hopefully captaining for feeder again, won't be to my detriment. And I've brought in, um, what's his name? Uh, Fainu. Yep. Yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. I thought I about it, never did it. And I regret it. Uh, White, I brought in for him. cash early on. He doesn't seem to be getting as much points as he was before, but I've got no other option. Uh, hmm. But otherwise be playing Crichton. Uh, Salmon is my emergency. Brought in Wishart for some cash as well, and he's doing okay. Mm. Uh, he's made a decent amount, uh, but usually play Hines and Brown. Uh, the only time I didn't play Plath was last week, and he got 77, so that pissed me off. <laughs> 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 he freaking gets a oh, try. Oh, that sucks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, and I brought in Strange and Anderson, um, and, and like you said, I've kept uh, I've kept Mulatala <laughs> for the moment. Uh, with he's the back. Event. Right. Yeah. Um, hoping Gagai has a decent has a decent game. He was another hopeful to try and make big money. Um, a bit pissed off that Garrick's out because he was supposed to be my my buy coverage as well. Mm, yeah, um, true. And then yeah, how long is he out for? Uh, I think week. I think just the eleven days. Oh, right. But he's he's on a buy next round. That's the problem. So you lose yeah. him for two automatically. Kind of hurts. Yeah. But you yeah. get him for round he's, nineteen. He's, so it's very important. He, yeah, I'd consider he, I'd consider him an end game player though. So I'm not. Yeah, I'm not too stressed out about him. I'm not going to be getting rid of him at all. But yeah, You've gone quite thin in the centers, haven't you? Pardon? You've gone quite thin in the centers, but they're very like your forwards are solid as shit. Like you can't really knock them. You've got two gun hookers, which is surprising in most sides. You've got the two best front rowers. 
you've got the two best second rowers. Yep. Um, you've got well, we got Hines, so I'd, I'd say he's the best half. Technically, he is averaging the most. And Dylan Brown, so the best 5'8", too. You've got a lot of guns, but I suppose at the expense of expensive centers. But it's such a massive upside position that, like, you can get 80 points out of a Jacob Gagai on occasion. Yeah, just, it well, just depends on who your halves are, really. and who. And yeah, how well, I've got, it, I've got in a few 1,400s this season. And I was, yeah, I well. was, doing, I was doing decent. Uh, with with about 11, 1,200 most rounds. But it's just then the buys. And then when you have ridiculous stuff like the HIAs, I've copped a lot of that. I think I've copped mm. every single injury because I had mm. Tino, I had Haas from the yeah. beginning, got injured, had Cleary. So I'm pretty sure I copped every single injury you can imagine out of, out of all the players. So, all the big ones. Yeah. 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 So I'm, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not too disgruntled. Um, because yeah, mm. the, the, the ceiling of this team is decent. It's huge, um, and I would I would preferably have Cleary in there as well, obviously. Yeah, well, um, you might not be I, far away with Wishart. I don't think he's going to be too different in price by the time Cleary's back. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, and I've got a, I've got about two hundred and something in the bank, so I can go straight to Cleary from somebody. Um, so right. I'm, I'm 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 sitting comfortable just um, as my uh, as my underneath my name there. My caption is. Uh, they don't count the buy rounds, so uh, I just I just yeah, don't, I, don't, I don't I don't do any sort of planning for buy rounds at all. I do a plan to get the best players possible as soon as possible, um, and then try and ride out the the last ten games of of the season and, and hope and hopefully you do like your twelve to fourteen hundred every week and that that boosts you up a, a lot because mm. um, that's how um I, I'm 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 in this uh, situation where I heard a podcast. And it was one of the previous winners, and that's what he did. That's exactly what was, he, what was his strategy. Um, and and I've been I've been doing it uh, since I heard the podcast, probably from like five years ago. So that's that's my my hopeful strategy every year to to try and uh, walk in the same footsteps as a previous winner. There you go. Yours is really yours is really similar in that in that sense that strategy to mine. I usually like will. I'll play for cash really early, like hit as much cash as possible. Don't worry too much about your scores. Don't stress about that. The scores will come. At the end of the season, I try to play for like I'll I'll nuff um I'll start nuffing players so that I can have like, those vice captaincy options. And then I'll just have big name players. That's the that's the basic goal is to just try and get those big scores at the end to try and bump up everything at the end. Then. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I Oh, well, it's tricky too because I only started really playing this last year, so I kind of went in just gun ho. You know, I was doing whatever I thought looked like an appealing move, and I think last year, um, by about round twelve ish, my team value was mm -hmm. about sixteen point something mil, and pretty much I was just like, cool. I, I saw a negative break even, and I saw someone on mine that had you know maxed in price, and I thought, sweet, I'm just going to trade down. And I'm just going to bank cash and I'm just going to keep investing. And um, I kind of haven't done it as much this year as I did last year. I've, I've tended to hold on to the guns a bit more and just get them to their peak. And then when they start to dip off, I'm like, well, I'll just keep them now because I've already got them. Where last year, I probably would have sold them. Even if I'd sort of just gotten them in or whatever it was, I'm like, cool. No, he's made me some money and I'm, I'm happy to move on. So like this year, I got a Zarko in before he went ballistic. And then he peaked at like 850 plus. And last year, I guarantee I would have sold him. Mm. And I would have bought someone who was quite cheap at maybe 500, but had come off a big game or something. And then just done that a few times and just banked more, banked more. But, you know, you start to work things out a little different. This round last year, I was ranked 100. And now I'm obviously not. So <laughs> I don't know if it's... Um, <laughs> I think it's honestly, I think it's entirely dependent on the actual season at hand, to be honest with you, how oh, to plan it. But mate, it's this as much as everyone wants to do stats and numbers and, and amazing decisions, it's all luck at the end of the day, right? Yeah. You know? hundred percent. Yeah. You can pick a you team can, and the team can go amazing or it can go horrible. <laughs> well, look at Garrick last week. Everything lined up for him to say, you know, at Brookie, he's averaging this much against these teams, 90 plus, yeah. captain him. Two HIAs and he ends on seven points. You can't pick it. Like that's that stuff's just going to happen. So, yeah, that's the nature of the beast. Unfortunately, with um, fantasy games, is that you just they're numbers. It's literally yeah. just numbers. So exactly right. Yeah, you got to get lucky. Um, I'll just go. I'll quickly just pump through the rest of the trade in and outs. Like there's a few in there that you'll kind of make sense about. One that I don't think makes a lot of sense, but um, Ruben Garrick is number four. Mm. So just keep him. 
you made that point. He's a he's a season hold, I think, regardless. Um, Latrell Mitchell's number five. I think he plays one game in the next four. So, you is know, that, you can kind is of... Sharing, is it, sorry, is that sharing with you? Oh, sorry. One second. You're right. There keep you going. Go. Sorry. There you go. Um, yeah, so you got Latrell, a number five, traded out. Yeah, uh, it's in the same sort of thing as Scott Drinkwater. Like, you know, these guys are good. If you just hold them out after around 20, you're going to have them for a good stretch. But I suppose it's it's a long way until then. It's a yeah. month away. So, um, Kai Pierce, Paul, number six, toe injury. I don't know. Yeah, the, I, think he's, the, I think he's a hold, wouldn't he, KPP? If you've got him, I've, especially if you've yeah. got him early. I'm off him a little bit at the moment, playing in the middle. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it just depends too. Like he's he's made some good coin, but he's scoring really well. Like he's either sixty or more, so mm. he's definitely mm. not you know urgent. But I'd I'd more so be looking at trading him to Nakora in the next right. couple of weeks. Um, Nakora's on a buy, so is, so is KPP, and he's got a low break even. They play nineteen, so you know there's there's easy swaps over. But I like his game, man. He's such a good player when he's on. Uh, Liam Henry's number seven. Just yeah, I suppose capitalizing on that peak cash rise. Yeah, I'm, I'm um, doing exactly the same. Yeah. I don't think he's been 550 for a while, or even if he was, he, he was maybe close to it. Went down again, went back up. Bit of inconsistency, not much, not as many minutes. Um, just, yeah, take advantage of the of the money. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. Um, Jack DeBellin's number eight, which is, I didn't think he was heavily owned enough to be in the top 10 most traded outs, to be honest with you. That's a bit of a random one, but... 580, he's a dual position as well. Um, I, I'd say surely that's a hold. He's almost 2,000 people trading him out. Mm. And he's he's a dual position. Yeah. He's dual position. He plays around 19. I just, who was that? I don't, I know, I don't know who they'd be going to. Jack DeBellin. Uh, yeah. yeah, I don't see why you'd be trading him out. I don't have him on the but Yeah, like if you got him in, it's probably obviously for the buy period. But yeah, I don't know. It's a bit of a random one. Your boy, Jace, Dylan Edwards, number nine. People aren't patient enough. And he's, uh, after that try on the weekend, that was the solo effort down the blind side and uh, confirmation that he's going nowhere. Uh, yeah. he, he, could be, he could be in for some big scores. He could be in for some big scores. He just needs a bit of confidence, a bit of kick up the ass. You know, he'll be right. He'll, you know, yeah. he, still, he still averages, what's his average? Like around 60, 70. So, Dylan Edwards. What's his average? Dylan Edward averages 94. Is that his, oh, that's last, his last few games? But his, his overall average is 65, isn't it? His overall average is 93.6. Really? Yeah. His three-round average is 100, and his last five-round average is 97.6. He's basically been 100 points a week. Dylan Brown? Dylan Edwards. Oh, Dylan Edwards. Oh, sorry. I thought you said Dylan Brown. Oh, yeah. No, no. Dylan Edwards. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I, I, had, I sidetracked to Dylan Brown. Yeah, I'm like, damn, what scores are you looking at? I've got the wrong Dylan so, Edwards. Obviously talking about his try against the Roosters. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, uh, I'm, I'm blanking. Yeah, uh, okay. That, that's my bad. That's my bad. No, you're right. Dylan, Dylan Edwards is a, is a keeper for me. Like, I'm, not, I'm not even going to go anywhere near his, uh, his red trade button. Stuff that that's he, he's uh, he's staying in my team forever. Yeah, mm. I wish I kept him. To be honest with you, I hate that I got rid of him. But we move. Um, and number ten is Kyle Eero. So the most consistent sixty points you will get every single week from what was a base dollar, too. That's crazy. All yeah. in base. Honestly, the, base. Like, yeah. he, he, doesn't, he, he doesn't. He doesn't. Yeah. He can't buy an attacking stat. Like it just. Yeah. No. It, it doesn't happen. He just cannot. Wait till he scores a try or two. Exactly. exactly right. A hundred percent. Or if he sets up more or have, something. Yeah. I don't well, know how now that rid of him when he's now that Braden Trindle's back. Surely with Trindle back, the left edge sees more. His first game, like Kyle Eero's first game in the NRL, he scored ninety-seven points mm. with attack, and obviously the base that he's been scoring every single week. But he doesn't dip below fifty ever. Yeah. So mm -hmm. like you just get one attacking stat in there, one try assist to Molotalo. Or anything, man. He's eighty points plus. Yeah, like that's easy. And to reiterate, round nineteen is there, and their draw is insane. I just, uh, I don't know. I can't make sense of it. But um, 
looking at the trade ins, there's a couple of weird ones in here. I reckon you'll probably, you know, have to take two hits, but James Tedesco, not very weird at all. He's the most traded in player, almost 12,000 people. We've gone on about it a few times. Second most traded in is Ruben Porter. I think exactly. that's got to be for a cash grab. Like, <laughs> has to be. Yeah. Although you're not getting him in for any other reason, but to, uh, Ruben, you know, Porter. Ruben Porter. Uh, Tigers, 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 Tigers second row. Yeah. What the fuck? Oh, I didn't watch Again, I didn't see the game. He's only at a five break even. Yeah. He's only going to make oh, yeah, 16 no, yeah. he told you he's gonna score. Th- he's gonna score three tries and take over kicking duties. Well. <laughs> I think it's um, it's straight enough territory. Like you get him in for, you're not even getting him in for cash. You're literally just getting him in to, to have play the round. a player, yeah. possibly play round nineteen, and never play again. Potentially, yeah, wow. You know, but who knows? Yeah. The Tigers have copped so much that you just don't know if they're even gonna use him for the rest of the season. There's a good chance they do. Like they don't have any other players, um, but yeah. If, if anything, wouldn't you be bringing in a Canberra player with the upside that they're versing the worst team in the comp? <laughs> I don't think there's any Canberra players at 200k though. Like their their edges are sorted. You got like Sasaki not named this week either. So like there's just not there's no option for them in that price. It's there's yeah, no one else enough. besides Porter for 200k. Yeah. Fair um, but yeah, it's it's a very short sighted play, I reckon. It makes sense if you need is like an enabler to do a big trade, but it's it's enough. Um, <laughs> Jerome uh, Jerome Hughes number three. So yeah, I don't, I don't, mind, yeah, I don't mind that. Yeah, I don't mind that. And that I was tossing um, up between him or Wisha uh, a couple of weeks ago, mm. and I thought I think I uh, wish I went Hughes just before that the the double upside, but. I wasn't I wasn't too displeased with uh, Wishart's scores, but Hughes seems to be on a on a huge run. He's in he's in a lot of good form. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've I've had Hughes for a little while now. I think I got Hughes in round twelve or thirteen. Mm. Um, good and yeah, he's been immense. He's been so good. So I've been, pretty much actually when he got back mm. from his injury, I waited a week and then I got him in the next time. So um, yeah, no, he was he was real solid. So it's a valid trade, and I, I think any of the Storm boys are. Good at the moment. I had the option out of him and Sam Walker, and I think I didn't. I wouldn't say I chose wrong because um, Sam Walker's done, done a pretty good job over the last few weeks, but Hughes did better. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I had the same option as well, but I'm I'm glad I went Hughes. And the plan realistically would probably be go to Hughes to Cleary when Cleary's back around. But mm. at the same time, like you know what, if Hughes is doing it anyway. There's a good chance I just have Hughes and Hines until the end of the year. Like I, I can't see. It depends on when Munster comes back, because until I, that I don't happens, think he is. I don't think he is. There's all the there's all the talk that he's out for the season. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's it's very touch and go with him at the moment. I don't think they can really nail down what the injury even is, besides mm. just mystery groin. So. Yeah. Well, they they yeah. the storm have managed to be coming in first with him out, and I'm not saying obviously we know what he can do. Um, but it's almost a case of like, let's say you got into potentially the finals and you've had the same team for now, what, 15 to, to, to 17 rounds. Are you changing? I know, I know how good he is. I know how much he's paid, but if he's not a hundred percent, are you putting him in? Not, uh, not no. like, not for us, not at a super coach st- like standpoint. No, from for, for Melbourne. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like surely, yeah. surely you're thinking, well, maybe you don't because you know, he's not a hundred percent. And you've been, you've made it there with the team you've got. Work with it. I don't know. It's just, no, no, it's a very, it's very valid it. point too. Like Hughes and Wishart are developing a really nice little combo together, and they've both been playing off each mm-hmm. other really well. Yeah. Obviously, when Munster's there, it tends to be like which of these two halves are going to run the game more than the other, because the yeah. other one really drops off when the other one does well. They never seem to really yeah. go in tandem. Yeah, um, that's so but, true. So these true. These guys. Munster will yeah. hit a few 30s and 40s in the season and then Hugh and Hughes will go big and then they'll swap over. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's very unlike your like your Moses and Brown sort of combination halves where you've got a game organizing <sighs> half and a really nice ball runner. Mm. And they can score well together. Mm. Um with Melbourne, it's yeah, it's like one guy's hot and the other one's not. So yeah. 
they're doing mm-hmm. good stuff, man, between the two, Wishart. And, you know, if Munster is out for the long term for the season, Wishart becomes a season-long play. Yeah. As a jewel. Well, um, you're not wrong about I've that. Got him in, I've got him in draft, and I freaking love it. He's been nuts. He's been insane. So, um, funnily enough, actually, Wishart's not even on the list of the 10 traded in. Um, Lehigh Hopawati's number four. So, that makes yeah, sense. the way That's that I... Good. Yeah, it's a cash grab, but the cash grab was last week. Mm. Um, yeah, I know. That's Manly why I didn't have, get him. Man, yeah. Manly have a buy next week. Turbo's due back round 18. So you get him in now for what's left of his cash rise, and then where does he play? Like, do they do they actually take the punt and put Turbo in the centres like they're doing all the research for and keep Hopawati there? But then, you know, if you're going to put him in the centres, where does Kohler and Garrett go? Does someone move to the wing? It's very, it's very risky. Um, hmm. Even for a one-week play, you're not even making his maximum cash. He missed that last week. So, yeah, yeah he's he probably, he'll probably make maybe 100K. And that counts as two trades because you're not going to keep him. And he's just a fullback, which hurts. Cool. If he was a dual centre, you can kind of get around it. So He's at, um, he's at negative 38 Projected to make seventy nine point five with a score of fifty eight. Hmm. So yeah, Which po- you'll... possibly if he gets a if he gets a bit more, say seventy five eighty, he could be in the hundred k area. Yeah. Um, Which but still last yeah. week, I reckon last week would yeah. have been the time to get him if you need the cash grab. But yeah, he made one hundred and thirty last week, didn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, yeah, I think if like uh, I wouldn't think that fullback is the position to to buy out enough and go that cheap in. But if you're going to, the only one that's gonna make you coin who isn't rising in cash is Fletcher Sharp. Mm. Um, and even still, I don't know if I'm in love with that play at all. So yeah, it's it's just surprising to see how high the list he is. Um, yeah. Jake, you got anything on Hopawati? Looking at your oh, like you, said, got, you like- got a cash down options everywhere, so. Yeah, oh, I just took I just took it off, obviously. Um, but yeah. I I'm not because I can't afford to waste the trade myself. Yeah. Um, and what was I going to say? I just completely lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah, I didn't jump on him last week. If I was going to do it, I would have jumped on him last week, and then he would have been make he would have been my last cash grab for the year. From now on, it's just I'm either I'm I'm, I'm nothing in upgrading. That's all I'm doing. That's that's where I'm starting. I have to. I've got no choice. Uh, I've stuffed yeah. myself over so hard by trading each week, and I've got myself into a position now where I can I can still make the eight in my comp, and I'm happy mm-hmm. with that for now. Like, I, but I need to start winning games from now on, pretty much onwards. Yeah, no, it makes sense. No, um, no, next two no Melbourne Storm, Melbourne Storm double up. Ellie Katoa, Ryan Pappenhausen, straight inside. Mm. So fair. Um, Katoa's a gun. So is Pappy, but obviously Pap's got his risk. Um, number seven, Adam Fenua Blake, you know, number one prop for the entire year so far. So I don't think it's ever too late to get him in. Yeah, Just under 700k been... now, too. Yeah. Well, he's at 698. Yeah. So, yeah. You might as well get him in. Well, that's it. This is kind of the lowest he'll be, really. I don't think he's ever going to dip lower than 700 the way that he's going. Yeah. Um, Dave for feeder again. Plenty of ways to get him at the moment with how many Origin players we've got out, but he's a gun. Yeah. Um, Jordan Rapana, number nine. That's an interesting one. Maybe, maybe that's uh, another one where it's bring him in to just play the rounds. He does have good upside. He is versing Tigers. Um, yep. I don't know. What's he at? 31 break even. Uh, it's, not, it's not the worst trade, but it's probably mm. better. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Like, he has been scoring well. He's a jewel, 550K, Rapana Rama. Like, you can't knock it. <laughs> That's it. Um, and, yeah, finally, last one in, Jermaine Azarko. So, there's your buy around coverage for 16, 19, 650K. You know, he's obviously dropped quite a lot from where he was. But, yeah, it's just it's just a rough week fixture for him against Melbourne, obviously. But I think Azarko's a, hmm. a long-term hold regardless. So, He's always if good you, for him. If you already have him, yeah. But if you're going to bring him in this round, he's 119 break even. Yeah. I probably I wouldn't don't, I don't this think round. He can but... anywhere near that against Melbourne. Mm-hmm. No. He'll, he'll lose he'll probably leave. 50, 60K. You could probably wait if you want to bring it, if you don't have him. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. There's not many other options outside of him besides, you know, your Roosters guys, and they're a little bit dearer. 
Mm. Um, and then, yeah, like good chance he's less than 600K in two, like, oh, you know, it could be around that mid 500s too, depending on how bad he scores in the next couple of weeks. I hope he doesn't for my sake. I've got him, but <laughs> yeah, no, it's, um, he's just got a massive ceiling too. That's the thing. Like he can yeah. score 150 if he goes hard, but it just seems like they just seem to cut him out a lot. They forget about he's there, but. Yeah. yeah, what's what's what are the uh, Dolphins doing the next couple of games? What have they got? The Finns. Um, let me have a quick look for you. So this week, obviously, they've got Melbourne. Um, in the next couple of rounds, they play St George, and then they play. Or well, they have a buy in round eighteen. So yeah, it's it's a hard one too to buy them in now. Mm. Cop the Melbourne, cop another week, and then a buy, and then they have the Souths in round nineteen. Yeah, South South and Penrith. South and Penrith, yeah. yeah. So, like, their run is quite hard, actually, because then they got the Roosters a couple games after, yeah. and then they end the season with Bulldogs, Melbourne, Broncos, and the Knights. So it's pretty much the, the toughest run for the Dolphins. They've had yeah. probably an easy run up until now, considering. Yeah. Um, hmm. It'll be a mad test for them. Might be time to look at offloading him if you've already got him. But um, True. That's, that's basically everything, boys. That's, you know, covered all the trade in and out. Yeah. Had some mad chat. Gone through team list. You guys got anything finishing touches on this one at all? No, all good, I think. Yeah. Jace. Um, yeah, no, just uh buy rounds don't count. So don't stress <laughs> it. <laughs> oh god. I love it's it. It's all good. If you get if you get 11, 11 or twelve players in, it's good enough. Don't worry about it. All right. Yeah, True. to be fair, you're not wrong. You can get away with 11, 12. Most people are in that position, but try and field a team if you can. <laughs> um but yeah thanks for tonight boys it's um it's been good fun the three of us having the mad chat so i hope everyone at home has enjoyed this and um you know the old like subscribe youtube spotify facebook the works so again thanks lads um Thank you. i'll catch cheers. you guys on the next one yeah cheers catch you then see you bye bye